you know what? There is no lack of great NFED half-wave antennas on the market today. This one makes deployment and recovery a breeze. Let's take a look at the real portable NFED half-wave antenna. Like I said, there are quite a few great NFED half-wave antennas on the market, and that's for really good reasons, as they are typically easy to deploy, relatively efficient, and are well suited for portable operation. The real potable antenna comes to the market with an additional feature that makes deployment even easier. It's built on a platform of a chalk line marker, so the antenna can be effortlessly unreeled and reeled back in again. Putting the antenna element on a reel eliminates two problems common with portable end-fed antennas. The radiator coming off of, the, of your wire winder and getting messed up in your kit, and the radiator, since it is on a reel, always stays untwisted and kink-free. The real portable antenna comes fully assembled. This isn't a kit, so you have a product that is ready to get on the air without any extra work. The antenna is designed for use on 40 through 10 meter bands, and it operates on 40, 20, 15, and 10 meters without a tuner. The antenna has a rated power handling capability of 100 watts sideband and 35 watts digital NCW. The guys over at Real Potable Antennas loaned me this NFED half-wave kit for this video. I'll be returning it after my review, my comments and experiences it with are my own and without any outside influence. The real potable antenna is a unique NFED half-wave antenna built on the platform of a chalk string marker. This antenna operates on the 40, 20, 15, and 10 meter bands without a tuner and on other bands within that range with the aid of a tuner. The unit is fairly compact, measuring 3.5 by 5 by 4 inches deep and weighing just over 13 ounces. Looking at the unit, you'll instantly notice the protrusion on its side. That black box is where the T140-43 toroid and antenna connection is mounted. The toroid is wrapped with a conventional 49 to 1 winding for the proper impedance match of a resonant and fed half-wave antenna. The antenna is available with either a standard SO239 UHF female connection or a BNC female connection. At one end of the unit is a steel cable loop for attaching the transformer to a support structure like a post or tree, and on the other end of the wire is an S-type carabiner for attaching it to a rope or the top of a mast. The radiating wire itself is stored in the winder portion of the antenna and it contains approximately 68 feet of 20 gauge silicon wire. Fully extended, it will be resonant at the bottom of the 40 meter band. The innovative feature of the real potable antenna is its proprietary active coupling of the radiating wire. So as you wind the wire onto the reel, the resonant point changes, allowing you to fine tune the antenna at whatever frequency point you wish. For example, if you want to do data or CW operation, leave the radiator fully extended. But if you want it to be resonant on the phone portion of the band, give it a few cranks and the resonant frequency point will move upwards. So how does the antenna perform? Well, let's put it on the air and find out. Deploying the real portable antenna is pretty straightforward. Uh, you just unreel the line and uh, put this end up into a tree or some other type of support. Uh, what we're gonna do today is we're gonna use the trees behind me, but instead of throwing a line in the tree, I'm gonna use my uh, 31 foot uh, fiberglass jackite uh, telescoping mast in order to support the end of the antenna. Then we're gonna bring it down over to where I'm standing and then the transformer unit and the real unit is gonna be supported with this four foot uh, fence post uh, with the, the steel spike on the on the bottom so it'll be so the transformer will be a few feet off the ground I'll be able to stick it uh, where I want it I'm not going to have to worry about any using any wires or lines in the trees we're in a day use area so I tend to try to be as uh, light as possible in in deploying in day use areas so let's get the real portable antenna up and uh, on the air
the way this antenna is designed, it's going to be resonant at the, the bottom of the band, the bottom of the 40, uh, 20, 15, and 10 meter bands. If you want to move the resonant point up a little bit, uh, what you can do is on the uh, transformer unit, just reel in a couple of turns, and that should move the resonant point a little bit higher up in the bands so you can favor the phone portion as opposed to the uh, CW and data portions of the band. So uh, right now you can see a minimum, minimum SWR on all of those bands, 20, or 40, 20, 15, and 10 meters. So what I ended up doing is about uh, five or six turns, I think it was about six turns on the reel here to shorten the antenna up. And that moved my resonant point from, oh, the bottom of the 40 meter band till about midpoint. But um, it moved the resonant point on the 20 meter band slightly above the band. But um, bandwidth is good enough that at least on both of those bands, I'm 1.3 to one or less um, for both of those bands. I'm not gonna, fiddle with it too much <laughs> because I just wanna, I wanna set it once and forget it and not have to worry about um, uh, making all those micro adjustments every time I, I switch bands. Uh, your particular deployment's gonna be a little bit different, of course, it depends upon where you're located, ground conductivity, things like that, but um, anywhere from two to three turns to five or six turns will probably get you uh, the results that you want. Uh, this is Kilo Bravo 9 or Victor Bravo Romeo. Kilo Bravo 9, Victor Bravo Romeo. Uh, good afternoon, Michael. You are 5 and 353 into US 10166. Uh, Roger, the 10166. You're coming in about a 55 five here into Wisconsin, US 1473. You too, you have a great activation, 7 3. Alpha India 4, Bravo Juliet, you are dead. Sparks on the air. Whiskey 9, Delta November Echo. Whiskey 9, Delta November Echo, 5 9 here in Wisconsin, US 1473. Back to you. Thanks, Michael, you're 5 5, 55 in Germantown, Wisconsin. Thanks very much. All right, hey, thanks for Germantown. We're sitting on Rib Mountain today, so uh, thanks for the contact. November 8, Tango, Sierra Uniform. November 8, Tango, Sierra Uniform. Nice 5 7 here into Wisconsin, US 1473. Back to you. Uh, QSL, I've got you 10 over 9 here at Northwest Ohio. Sounding real good there. All right, hey, thanks for Northwest Ohio today. You have a great day in 7 3. 7 3, sir. November 3, Romeo, Charlie Whiskey. November 3, Romeo Charlie Whiskey 5 1 here into Wisconsin, US 1473. Back to you. Yeah, QSL, Michael. I've got you about a 5 and 5 in Maryland. Over. All right. Hey, thanks a lot for Maryland today. You have a great day in 7 3. Have a great day. Thank you so much. 7 3. Kilo Quebec 4, Golf Tango Hotel. Kilo Quebec 4, Golf Tango Hotel, nice 5-5 five five here into Wisconsin, US 1473, back to you. Copy 1473, 5-5, I got you a 5-7 in Tennessee, over. All right, hey, thanks a lot for Tennessee today. You have a great day in 7-3. Kilo Bravo Niner, Victor Bravo Romeo, calling CQ for Parks on the Air. November 5, Sierra Romeo Charlie. November 5, Sierra Romeo Charlie, big 5 9 into US 1473. Back to you. QSL on 5 9, thanks for 1473. You are a 5 7 here in Arkansas. Sounding great. All right, well, thanks a lot for the Arkansas today. Greatly appreciated. Uh, you have a great day in 7 3. 7 3. And this is KB9 VBR, Parks on the Air, QRZ. Uh, the Park to Park station? Park to Park, Michael, is K9 RVA, Kilo 9, Romeo, Victor, Alpha. I am in two parks, two parks. First K9, Romeo, Victor, 
4567. All right, I got your two parks, 0572 and 4567. Uh, you're coming in a nice 5-3 here into Wisconsin, US 1473. Back to you. QSL, QSL, hey, thank you very much. I got you about a 5-5 into Warsaw, Virginia, Victor Alpha. Appreciate all you do for the hobby. Enjoy your videos and enjoy your activation, 73. All right, hey, you too. You have a great activation in 7-3. Take it easy. Whiskey 8, Juliet, Juliet. Whiskey 8, Juliet, Juliet. Nice 5-7 here into Wisconsin. U.S. 1473. Back to you. Thank you for the 5-7. Also 5-7, Mike India. All right. Thanks for Michigan. Stand by for a second operator. Hi, Whiskey 8, Juliet, Juliet. This is Kilo Zulu 9 Victor. Uh, sound like 5-9 to me here in Wisconsin. And uh, what park are we at here? I'm looking on this. <laughs> 1473. Is it 1473? Yep. Oh boy. All right. Uh, US 1473, and uh, thanks for the contact. 73. Okay, 73, Dave. Uh, you're 5 9 in Michigan. Whiskey 8, Juliet, Juliet. All right. Thanks for Michigan, and you have a great day, 73. This is KB9VBR. Parks on the air. QRZ. <clears throat> what do you need? Six? Yeah, I got five now. Okay. Kilo Quebec for Japan, Victor Romeo, thank you. 5 1 into US 1473. Back to you. Roger, Roger, you were 5 9 into almost Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Great signal, thank you very much for the activation. Enjoy your video, sir. 73. All right, thanks for Myrtle Beach. Uh, stand by for a second operator. Roger, Roger. Uh, Kilo Quebec for Juliet, Victor Romeo. This is Kilo Zulu 9 Victor. Thanks for the call. Five and four here in Wisconsin. QSL. Roger, Roger. You're five and nine. Great job. Y'all have a safe one, 73. You too. Take it easy, 73. Uh, we're going to grab a couple more here. KB9 VBR parks on the air. Last call. Zero <coughs> Alpha Zero Charlie Tango park to park. So what are my thoughts of the real portable NFED half-wave antenna? You know, as I frequently said before, an NFED is an NFED is an NFED. There really isn't a whole lot of difference between one model or another, and you should make your purchase decision not on the purported performance of one, but instead the specs, the construction, the fit and finish. With that said, uh, the real portable antenna does come to the market with a very unique feature and it's its ability to effortlessly roll out and roll back in again. Pulling out the wire was easy and the wire itself is high quality. Uh, you can make adjustments with this antenna just by simply just winding in a bit of the wire. This is really handy if you want the resonant points of the NFED half wave to be a little bit higher up in your particular band. With that said, the antenna does not require a tuner for 40, 20, 15, and 10 meters. And I found that to be their, its most unique features. Now band conditions for uh, my on-air test probably weren't the best, but the antenna worked quite well. Uh, by the time I got it on the air, it was midday and 40 meters was, oh, pretty much shot. But I was still able to get 10 contacts on the band, even on sub-optimal times of the day. Uh, because 15 meters is the third harmonic of the 40 meter band, it sometimes can be an issue with NFED half wave antennas. But the real portable antenna did well on that band uh, with very good SWR and nice performance. I was able to get a few contacts on 15 meters. 20 meters was the money band for me, and even with unpredictable propagation and fading, the antenna did well. I was able to pick up about 39 contacts total on my brief on air test. As for the downsides with this antenna, I would say it would have to be its size. Uh, this additional housing of the reel and for the transformer unit adds weight and bulk to the antenna. This really isn't a con that compact of an antenna as it is physically larger uh, than some of the other NFED half waves that I've used. But, it's but if physical size really isn't a problem for you, uh, then yeah, you know, the real portable antenna it was probably going to be a good option. Final words, if you're looking for a fully constructed antenna and don't want to deal with assembling a kit and size isn't a problem with you, then I would certainly look at the real portable antenna. 
Well, thank you to Real Potable Antennas for loaning me an NFED half-wave antenna for this review. The Real Potable Antenna is available direct from their website, so check it out. Links are in the video description down below. Well, do you have any questions about the Real Potable Antenna? I'll leave them in the comments. I'd love to hear them. I'm Michael, KB9VBR. Thanks for watching. You have a great day in 73.